Mountain Slaughter friends. This is another episode of Mountain Slaughter Garage. Today we're going to talk about something that's largely overlooked in the, on the snowmobile, especially the mountain snowmobile. That's probably as important as any other part of it that we probably don't think about because it's just there and it works and it's the brake system. On a mountain sled, we're commonly taught to ride with one or two fingers on the brakes so you can kind of throttle and hit the brakes and stuff when you're going around trees and maneuvering around um, obstacles. And it's becoming more and more important but if you've ever ridden a mountain sled without brakes, it's a scary, scary experience. And I've done that enough times in my life to know that protecting your brake system from something breaking it is optimally important. Now, the first time I experienced this was on this sled right here, a 2004 um, King Cat, back, oh, probably almost 20 years ago, had one of these, was uh, riding through some trees, had gone up a hill, came down, we're coming down through some trees like this, cled it too close to one tree and my hit my hat my left handlebar on a tree and it broke my brake lever off never even experienced that before i've been riding snowmobiles for six seven years before that the skidoo and the polaris i'd ridden before that all the brake system was all metal and i would never even thought about broken something off and you know as we progressed with mountain sleds we ventured out into the trees more and more and it was through that 2000s years where we were starting to venture away from the big open areas and the big bowls into riding in trees and when you ride in trees a lot, you're taking a big chance of breaking some of the plastic parts off that are coming on some of these newer sleds. Now, one of the unfortunate things we've seen with the brake systems over the last 10 or five years on some of the snowmobile manufacturers, is they're going away from what we used to have is these full metal brake system with a metal lever and a metal reservoir and going to plastic parts. I mean, it's unfortunate that to save a few ounces of weight, we're going to plastic parts. The first time I ever broke a brake reservoir off was on this snowmobile right here. My first um, Summit G4, I picked this up in the fall when these first came out, was really excited to ride it. Got out on a few break-in rides, mostly on the road, got all broke in. Then by the time we got some really deep snow in early December, I went on a trip with some of my friends. We go up the trail, we get to where the snow's getting really deep. The first kind of open hill we see, we all kind of boogie up and there's a place where you can get up about 100 yards and you can turn around some small aspen trees that are growing on the snow. And as I turned, I leaned a little bit because I'd never ridden this sled before and it tips a lot easier than the sled I came off. As I was coming around the corner this way, it tipped a little too far this way and it tipped over on its side, on the downhill side. And so I mean, there were like three, four feet of really soft snow. So we roll this thing over, get it back up. And what do I notice? My brake reservoir is gone. I'm like, how does that break off? And this is the first year that Skidoo went to the plastic brake reservoir. And the first thing I do pretty much on my first ride is I break that thing off. And so later on in the year, some of my friends broke theirs off too. So we bought one from Skidoo and we always took it with us in our backpack because we knew eventually that someone was gonna break off another one. And it's unfortunate that this has to happen, but Articat was probably the first one to go to a plastic reservoir on the Procline snowmobiles with the haze brakes. And then Skidoo went to the plastic reservoir, 2017 G4, and they still have the same brakes on theirs. And the last one to convert from an all metal master cylinder to a plastic master cylinder was Polaris last year on the Matrix chassis, which pretty much has the same brake system as on the current Articat. So the current Articat and Polaris brakes look very, very similar. Um, the reservoir and the lever and everything. The Skidoo one is a little bit different, but they all have, everyone has plastic reservoirs now that can easily break off if you hit a tree, roll it over, um, have some kind of an accident, tips off your trailer or something. And Skidoo nicely still has a metal brake handle, which you don't have to worry about breaking up, but the ergonomics of this handle is pretty poor, especially for one finger riding like we like to do now. But the Polaris and the Articat both have plastic brake levers and I've broken both off, unfortunately. So protecting these things is utmost importance. This is where TKI comes in. I think TKI might've been the first company to make a rare reservoir cover for the Skidoo five or six years ago. On the Skidoo, just kind of fits over like that. Really nice thing for protecting your um, brake reservoir. So let's get let's go in close here. We're just gonna kind of show you the brake system on this and the parts we're gonna replace. These, when I had this brake off, it came off so easily. I was so surprised. I just rolled my sled over. I don't even think there was any logs or anything underneath, but it must have hit something. So they snap off so easily. I mean, you could be riding through, and even a little tree like this, you come through here, and there's this little tree, and boom. 
just like that. That's as easy as these things bust off here. And it's crazy that they come off that fast and then you're left with a mess. You know, there's a little piece of plastic with a screw that holds our reservoir on. You know, here's our reservoir with the bottom broken out of it. And that's as easy as these things come off. You really don't want to be riding this mountain riding with this looking like this. So protect your brakes. Um, otherwise, when you least expect it and don't want it, you're going to have this happen. So let's show you how to prevent this. Now this has become sepsis problem, especially on the Skidoo. That Skidoo is now has made their own brake reservoir protector. It actually comes stock on some of the 2023 sleds. But there are a number of companies that make these. My favorite's TKI. It always kind of has been. They make great billet products. Uh, nice thing about them is they have a bunch of different colors. You can buy this as a two pack or the brake reservoir cover and the lever, purple, red, orange, black, blue, pink. You can buy this as a two pack for 110 bucks, pretty cheap insurance for your mountain snowmobile. And they're, you know, they're super, it's this thing super easy to install. Um, there's really only two bolts you got to um, take off to install the reservoir cover. There's two eight millimeter bolts here. And what you're doing, you're taking these two eight millimeter bolts off, you're taking the cap off, and then you're replacing the cap with this part here that comes on it. And that just kind of sits down over the top there. You put your two eight millimeter bolts back in. And boom, you're, now you're protected. I mean, that's not gonna come off. Great little add-on for this. Uh, the other add-on that I really like is when you're mountain riding this machine and you're back here on the bars, the reach and everything on this stock uh, lever that comes on the skidoo isn't great. It's not great for one, one finger riding or two finger riding. It's just too far out and the curvature is not good. So what you can do, you can go to a billet brake lever like this where it's got a little bit better ergonomic curve on it. This is really pretty simple to replace. 10 millimeter open end or box end wrench with a 10 millimeter socket. Take the nut off, bolt comes out through the top. The one little tricky part of this is this comes off. You still have your brake lever on it here. So what you have to do on your brake lever, you have to pull this off. There's a little C-clip on the bottom of this right here. And what you got to do, you got to take your little pick or something and pry that little C-clip off. Just like that. See how that comes out? And then you can pull the pin out, the spring out, and you can replace this piece onto your TKI piece. All right, so now we've got this all back together. We've got our brake reservoir cover on, our brake lever on. Much easier to get your finger on this to pull the brake. The ergonomics of this brake lever is so much better than this little stock one. They're both made out of aluminum, so this isn't a bad brake lever as far as strength goes. Not like the Polaris and the Articat Haze brake that's plastic. So this is a great setup for your skidoo to protect your brake reservoir, your brake lever, plus the ergonomics of your mountain riding of getting your fingers down here on this lever. So highly recommend it on any skidoo if you're going to be mountain riding for sure. I would do this stuff. I've had friends, oh, I don't need that. I've never broken one off. But if you haven't and you like to get out in the, in the mountains and backcountry ride, especially if you're riding in the trees, you're following your friend in the trees, you're going down hills to the trees, you're eventually probably going to break this off. It's so easy to break off. Um, it's just so easy to protect it for a hundred bucks. So, um, good add on. Let's go look at the Polaris. I'm just going to show you on the Polaris because the Articat is pretty much the same brake system as the Polaris. Both use pretty much the same haze brakes. So let's go over to Polaris and look at that one now. Now we're going to move into the Polaris and Articat section of the brake protection video. Going to do both these together because Articat and Polaris both pretty much use the exact same, uh, master cylinder reservoir and brake lever from Hayes. Articat started using it on the 2019 when the Alpha came out. Polaris just started using it last year. Even though these look identical to the naked eye, Articat one looks like in this picture. I'm just going to show you a picture of it. And then if you look in here, Polaris one looks, for all intents and purposes, almost identical. You really can't tell a difference by looking at them. There are two main differences though. If you look at these, this is a an Articat TKI brake lever, the TKI Polaris brake lever. If you look at these, if you line up the pivot hole on both of these, if you can see this, you can see how one 
ends up being a little bit longer than the other here. That's the main difference. So you really can't interchange these from Polaris to Articat because the two levers are a little bit different. The other thing that's different, and this probably doesn't make as big a difference, is the emergency brake lever on the Articat is plastic. And this little emergency brake lever on the Polaris is made out of aluminum. So that's the other um, main difference. Otherwise, they come off, they come on, and you replace the parts just the same. So um, we're gonna show you how to do that on this. It's pretty easy, pretty quick. The main difference between this and the Skidoo is the pivot pin that goes through the brake lever right here, it doesn't have a bolt. It's just got a little spring-loaded um, pin on the bottom of it you gotta push in. So we're gonna show you that in a second, how that works. But I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about brake levers on this. This is a brake lever off my Articat, uh, my 19 Alpha. And if we'll show you on the brake lever that I showed you the picture of, you can see this one's broken off because I hit a tree. And right here, Articat put little notches in this so it like has a controlled brake area which is kind of nice because that way it breaks off right here instead of down here where you can't use it. And if you hit it, it usually breaks off right here where you still have a little bit of finger throttle you can get to this. So that's kind of nice. The one thing that Articat's done with their brake lever, um, the Polaris brake lever doesn't have that, it just comes straight out. The other story is uh, on my boost last year, I got it in late in February. I had bought a TKA brake reservoir cover and a brake lever for it that I never put on, unfortunately because my last ride out of the season, it had just snowed like a foot and a half and it was really a spectacular day we were out riding. And probably the first hour of the day, I'm going up to the trees and I kind of leaned too much trying to get around a, a tree well and got into it and I broke my brake lever off. That's this picture right here. Brake lever is pretty much completely gone and inoperable. And so what am I to do? I'm like, I, I, this is my last ride of the year. I don't want to spend the whole day riding without a brake because it's actually a very miserable experience to ride a mountain sled in the mountains especially when you have good snow um, when you don't have a brake lever and we were doing stuff we were jumping off these little uh, cornices and stuff and landing down where you can see the trees at the bottom and it's definitely going to need a break in that kind of situation we dug into our bags and we found uh, some things to try and fix this we got baling wire duct tape and then this uh you can see this, this, this little lever here. That's one of those little levers you put through a spark plug puller and you twist it. And uh, we were able to jerry-rig that together so I uh, had a brake lever to, for the rest of the day. This actually worked. The scary thing about this is you, and you never know when this was gonna fail. I mean, I kept expecting it to fail throughout the day, but it actually lasted the whole day. Uh, I've rotated our brake lever down here just so you can see the bottom of it a little easier. And this is where that little pivot pin comes through right here. And this little spring-loaded part on this one is poking through right here. So if we just take a little pick, push that spring in, and push that through, we can just pull the pin out the other side, just like that. And then our lever comes off. Then we're going to go over to the bench. We're going to show you how to replace the emergency brake part of it. Okay, now we've got our new TKI brake lever here. We've got our old Polaris brake lever here. We need to get this pivot out right here so we can put the emergency brake lever onto this one. So if we turn this over, we can kind of see we have the same two. We have this little pivot pin right here, and we've got to push that little spring-loaded part in. Then we can push it down, but the problem is when the pivot pin gets down below here, that spring thing is just going to pop out again and keep us from pushing that all the way through. So what we have to do is release the spring to where we can see that spring-loaded keeper here. We've got to push that in again to be able to pull it all the way through. So these are the parts we're going to pull off. We're going to reuse the spring, the pivot pin, and the emergency brake lever onto our new TKI lever. Now it's a little tricky to get the spring and everything back together. There's a couple different ways you can do it, but the easiest way I've found is this. Here there's a big hole and a little hole. You're going to put the spring into the little hole. You're going to hold that like that. You're going to bring this over here. Now this bent part of the spring is going to go in this hole right here. So you're going to put this on into the little hole. So you're holding it like this. And then you can just kind of push it all together. Hold it together. Turn it upside down. Line up the hole on this side. And just push your pivot pin back into place. Okay. And there you go. Have it all back together. Make sure when you put it back in that the little keeper, the spring-loaded keeper is, is out here where it's not going to come out piston for the master cylinders right here, this round part. And when you put this in, you're going to have to compress it just a little bit in order to get it to fit, to get your pivot pin to go down in there. So 
So now we got our brake lever on right where it's supposed to be. A lot nicer feel to it than the stock brake lever. You're gonna have to hit that super, super hard to get it to break, which is if you're gonna hitting something that hard, you're gonna break a lot more than just this. So got the brake lever on. The next thing we're gonna do is put the reservoir cover on. The reservoir cover, it just slips down over here and you have to remember to put your brake lever on first because if you don't, the pin right here isn't gonna come out because your reservoir cover is gonna be out of the way. So what we do on this, we pull those three screws out. You don't need to take the cap off those three screws go out and this just fits over the top and you put the TKI screws that come in your kit back over the top of this. One thing you have to remember, if you have your reservoir pointed down a little bit, you're going to want to loosen the 30 Torx screw on this side of this and pivot this up a little bit so your reservoir is sitting completely horizontal. Otherwise, if you happen to take the reservoir cover off, you're going to spill your brake fluid out and you don't want to do that because otherwise then you'll have to replace it. So. We're going to set that horizontal, little Torx bits. Okay, got those three Torx screws out. We're going to take our TKI reservoir cover. Now this comes with three longer screws. These are actually um, Phillips screws that get screw on here. All right, so there you have it. We're all protected. Reservoir covers on, brake handles on. The brake handle on this really is in a nice position for mountain riding where they've designed this. I really like it. So we're going to loosen our 30 again. We're going to kind of put this back. I kind of like it tilted down a little bit because do a lot of riding standing up. And uh, that's the most comfortable places to have it for me anyway to tilt it down. You're going to want to put it where you want it, where it's most comfortable for you and your riding styles. All right, there we go. All protected. So like whether you have an Articat or Polaris, um, replace both of those, keep you protected. You're less likely to break your brake lever off. You're less likely to crack or break your reservoir that holds your brake fluid and be without brakes. So really good products made by TKI. Like I said, these come in a different bunch of different colors for Polaris and Articat. And uh, you can buy the whole kit, the two of them together for pretty reasonably priced, priced just over a hundred bucks. The aftermarket was making a number of these reservoir covers for the Skidoo long before Skidoo came out with them. And I mean, it really took them until really the last year. I and mean, this was a new part for them when they actually had their own reservoir cover, a new part a year ago. You know, this sled had been out five years by then. So aftermarket really helps us out in the snowmobile industry as far as coming up with stuff the manufacturers don't think of and we can fix stuff and get it to market way faster than the manufacturers do. So good job for TKI and the other manufacturers that come up, come up with stuff like this and help us um, protect our snowmobiles um, while we're out riding. Um, so this is great add-on parts for any mountain sled, whether you have Articat, Yamaha, because they're both the same, Polaris, essentially the same brake system, slightly different if you really look at it, but you really use the same cover, the same brake lever. And then Skidoo, all three plastic reservoirs and plastic levers on Articat, Yamaha, and Polaris. Skidoo's got an aluminum lever. You don't have to worry about braking, but the ergonomics on it are pretty crappy. The new lever that comes on the 2023s is shaped a lot better. I really like that brake lever. Um, it's really a nice looking brake lever. So until next time, we'll see you on Mount Slater Garage. Have fun out there. The snow's just starting to drop in the west. Probably get my first ride tomorrow. Tomorrow's November 5th. We're going to go ride, see what kind of snow we can find. And uh, we'll see you next time at Mount Slater Garage. All right, we're out on the first ride. Not bad for the Utah, probably close to two feet of snow. Got our Chaos brake system all protected. Got our TKI cover, TKI brake lever. Um, really like the position of this brake handle. Uh, we're gonna go do some more riding. You ready?